What's up, YouTube? Today we're going to do a video on um, how to execute a good ride as a road captain. So you've been selected as a road captain. Maybe you're new at this and you, you're a little bit nervous about it. You're leading 40, 50 bikes and you're not entirely sure that uh, you have it all down. Don't get nervous. We're going to help you with that. Before we get started, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon, help a sucker out. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The first thing to do is to plan your destination. It should be something interesting. Could be a restaurant. Uh, I'll give you an example. Last year we went to the Battleship New Jersey. That was a cool place. Everybody had a really good time. Uh, call them up. Make sure they are open to large groups as well as bikers. <laughs> Some places don't want us. Um, you're going to ask for group rates, group discounts. Uh, I, when I spoke to the uh, the Battleship New Jersey, they were ecstatic to have us. Uh, in fact, they put us, uh, they parked us right up front in front of the battleship so they could take pictures and put it on their website, right? So there's nothing uh, that says uh, America more than uh, 40 Harley Davidsons in front of uh, the USS New Jersey. It was pretty cool. And of course, uh, we had a picture uh, as well. So check with them. They did give us a discount. We saved, uh, I believe it was $10 a person, which is pretty significant. Uh, you're going to ask about food, right? What's available, what's not available. Uh, you may have to plan a trip to a restaurant uh, on top of your destination, or maybe they have food there. Find out, figure out the pricing so you can let everybody know what to expect. Now that uh, you have your destination selected, it's time to set your route. I like to use Harley Ride Planner. Uh, it's great because uh, you can export a GPX file, and uh, with the new GTS radios, you can basically use Bluetooth on your phone to send it right to your navigation. So there's no USB requires requirements anymore. It's uh, it's pretty handy. Uh, so pick your route. Stick to county roads if you can. Back roads. Uh, again, pay attention to traffic lights and stop signs. Obviously, you're not going to be able to avoid all of them, uh, but try and keep it to a minimum. Right? You want routes that flow very smoothly. You want to be able to keep uh, a steady pace. We'll talk about pace real quick. Um, when you're selecting your rides, um, the county roads allow you to hold a steady speed. And once you think you have that set, open up some of these roads, if you've never been on them before, in uh, Google Maps, Street View. It works wonders. Right? It, you know, Sometimes those maps may not be 100% up to date, uh, which is why we do a pre-ride after we uh, do some street view, but street view will give you a very good idea on whether that road is, is acceptable or not. All right, so uh, open up street view, click around, click on a bunch of the roadways to see if uh, if they're nice county roads or not, or you know, all of a sudden it's pumping you through uh, the middle of a town somewhere that you didn't expect. Now you can just uh, plan a route around that stuff if you have to. So street view, very, very important. Now, after you look at street view, you're going to have to do a pre-ride. You really need to do that. Pre-rides are important. You want to verify that this route is indeed what you expect and what the group expects. So hop on your bike, ride the route, make sure that there's no construction, make sure that the roads are in good condition. Uh, look, it's inevitable in New Jersey, you're gonna hit intersections. Make sure as you exit the intersections, as you're doing this pre-ride, look for places to pull over for the and wait for the rest of the pack. Whether there's a parking lot up, up ahead, uh, maybe the shoulder is extra wide in some areas, there's always a place uh, not too far away in New Jersey to pull over and wait for everybody to get through the intersection. You don't want to just leave everybody behind. And uh, like I said in a couple other videos, what happens is, is everybody gets that mentality where they got to get through that intersection and they rush through it and you know, God help us if somebody makes a mistake. So um, everybody should expect that the group is waiting for them to get through that. You should be planning for a break. If you're traveling some kind of a distance or, you know, I would say everybody typically, uh, in my experience, appreciates a break at uh, probably about 100 miles or hour, hour, 20 minutes. So understand that people are going to need a break. Not everybody is uh, people have small bladders. <laughs> Maybe they have to go, they pull over and have to go to the bathroom. Uh, anticipate that, okay? So while you're doing your pre-ride, 
make mental notations of maybe there's a, a Wawa, a quick check around, whatever uh, the the uh, the local mart is in your area. You know, pay attention to that so you can pull over people. Maybe they want to get a drink as well. Uh, anticipate that just because you pull into a place like that, you're going to be there for 30 minutes. It never fails because people start talking. Everybody's having a great time. Who's going in for a drink? Who's taking a smoke break? And who's going to go to the bathroom? And who needs gas? And oh my God, here we go. So uh, it's up to you as the road captain to basically get everybody back underway quickly as possible. Communicate to them. You're here for 10 minutes, 10 minutes only, right? Don't get comfortable and cozy. Don't start taking your helmet off and, uh, and gloves and, and everything and, and relaxing. Um, so that's up to you to dictate that timing, right? If you have the time and you're not in a rush, then okay, who cares? <laughs> but that's up to you. Okay, now it is the day of the ride. Um, you're going to do a, a check-in for the hog chapter, right? You need to bring a sign-in sheet. You need to bring waivers for any kids. There's an adult waiver as well. Any any people that are on the ride as guests need to sign a waiver. Members do not. They just need to sign in. Right. So make sure you have that. Get a clipboard ready, and uh, and have those documents passed around so everybody can sign in. And double check. Make sure that everybody signed in. Now the reason you're going to have everybody sign in is, is Harley Davidson has insurance for that ride. If something happens, we have insurance as a club. So that's very good. Now, if you didn't sign in, you're not really qualified for the insurance. So make sure you get everybody to sign in. That helps. When you're riding this route, remember you have people of all skill levels following you. Your job is to execute as smoothly as possible. You don't want to do jackrabbit starts. You don't want to go 40 miles an hour and a 25 you're going to do the speed limit maybe five over i recommend that you use cruise control whenever you can to keep the pace steady people appreciate it uh, i always did that and everybody always tells me nobody beats your rides and i just laugh i said what do you mean it's because it's a nice smooth pace right there's no jackrabbits and people catching up and people slowing down i make sure that i am going 40 45 miles an hour in a 40 and it is a steady pace, right? Well, because, and the main reason is, is because I set the cruise control. Why? Because I know there's people of all skill levels behind me and uh, I need to be able to make sure and I want to have, want to have that, uh, that time um, without worrying about how fast I'm going to look at my mirrors, to check, to communicate with the, the sweep and uh, all the other good stuff involved in a ride. Also on a ride day, you're going to call the venue. You're going to give them a final head count. Give them an uh, give them an update, right? Especially with restaurants, it's really important that you give them a head count uh, because they might have to bring extra staff. So uh, with COVID still lingering, these restaurants are very short on staff. Uh, another thing to be mindful of is is this place capable of serving 40 people at the same time? Right? It, it tends to be a problem. You know, we're, you're going to be there for two hours, two and a half hours, it, inevitable. Uh, I recommend that you communicate with the restaurant that you do not want large tables, that you want everybody sitting at um, any of the tables that are available in the restaurant. And the reason being is it allows the wait staff to serve Four people at a time, two people at a time, six people at a time, and they move on. It helps the kitchen. It helps the wait staff. Uh, otherwise, you know, they're going to be cooking 30 meals all at once and try and bring that stuff out. And that's going to take three hours. There's just, there's not too many restaurants that are capable of doing that small pubs and things that like we would like to go to. They're, they just can't do that. They can't pull that stuff off anymore. They don't have enough staff. So uh, be mindful of that as well. Another thing to remember is you have all experience levels with you. Be mindful of the less experienced riders. Try and keep them up front uh, because you can check your mirror if you have an inexperienced rider right behind you, you know that you need to set the pace maybe a little slower, or maybe you can go just a little bit faster because they're keeping up just fine, right? So uh, inexperienced riders should be up front. Trikes should be in the back, right? If you watch my group riding video, uh, it goes over all that. It's for safety concerns. It's not to insult the trikers at all, uh, but you know they take up a huge chunk of the road and they, they limit visibility for everything that's behind them. On ride day, you're going to do a pre-ride checklist. Now, 
Uh, we have, hog members, we have a pre-ride checklist. You can talk to your head road captain and ask him for a copy of it so you don't forget anything. Uh, simple things, go over staggered formation, um, go over distance, new riders up front. We do not control intersections as hog chapters work. Uh, Harley Davidson does not allow us to do that. We're, we don't use blockers, so um, don't do that just because, uh, God forbid, something happens. Again, we're not covered by insurance because we broke the rules, unfortunately. I would avoid right turns at a red light at all costs, especially with that many bikes, because not everybody's going to get through, right? So you wait for the light to turn green so we have the intersection and then proceed to make the right turn. You're going to demonstrate the hand signals, right? Go over them. Again, on this checklist, on the back is all the hand signals. What we usually do is we ask somebody to come up and we read through these and uh, we ask them to show everybody what a left turn is, right turn, the popo. <laughs> it's a popo. We got a problem back of the head. I need gas pointing down at the gas tank. Uh, what other ones are important? Obstacles in the road. You're going to hit your left or, or right uh, foot out. And, and make sure you tell everyone to pass the signals back. You need to keep um, reiterating this. Uh, every ride, every opportunity, and it forms good habits, right? We want everybody passing things back. So I think that about does it. We'll summarize, right? Um, pick your destination. Plan your route. Harley Ride Planner. Google Maps Street View helps a ton. You're going to pre-ride your ride, make sure the road conditions are, are safe, that the roads are good, there's no construction, look for places to take breaks, look for places to pull over after the intersections that you're inevitably going to have to go through, um, and reiterate, or not reiterate, you're going to communicate that to the group in your pre-ride. You're going to let them know these are the things. We're going to stop in an hour and a half, um, we're going to take a, a smoke break or whatever you need. Uh, we're going to eat at this restaurant. We should get there at about this time. We're going to take these roads. You're going to go over all that information with everybody as well as uh, the checklist. Okay. I think that about does it. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them down below. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. This is Snifty Dugan signing off.